Hi, welcome to EdTech Moment, where we take just a moment to show you how to quickly integrate technology into your classroom. In this episode, we are looking at Google Calendars, how to access Google Calendars on your mobile device and on a website, how to share a calendar, and how to embed a calendar. EdTech Moment is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com slash edtechmoment. It's a great way to support all these tutorials, and it's a great way to get access to over 100,000 audiobooks. Hi, welcome back to Ed Tech Moment. I'm Bill Selleck. Let's jump in to Google Calendar. Now, I'm going to assume that you know basic things about a calendar, so I'll highlight some differences between Google Calendar and just your regular old calendar. First thing, most obvious thing, you can search the calendar. This is huge. This is fantastic. Any details, locations, all of those are searchable. You can also choose if you have specific people that you've invited. You can search just by that, or if there's a specific word you're looking for, under what. If you have more than one calendar, you can choose which calendar you're going to search. So it becomes a powerful way to access your stuff in the calendar, which is quite different from just more of a, an analog calendar. Another big thing is you can have several calendars. So if I click that, that's how I create a new calendar. Pretty simple. My main one is just one I call Bill Selleck. Right? So today, I had some holes in the backyard for my dog, had to fill those in. Pretty simple. If you have a mobile phone, you just go into Settings, Calendars, and your Google Calendar can automatically sync between the desktop version and your phone version. So whatever you create an event on, it'll sync back and forth with that, which is fantastic. It's an easy way to push and sync calendar items. You can have different calendars to share with different people. So I play in a band called the Francis Band. If I look at only this calendar, you can see I don't have anything today with the Francis Band. Now if I click on this triangle, let's take a look at just the settings of this. So this is something I get to see with whomever I share it with. That's the name of it. Description, location if you want, if that helps. If you invite each other to a calendar, it shows up here, which is pretty cool. I'll show you how to invite people in a moment. If we have a website, we can have a, a secret page hidden so that we can always see that amongst each other. And if I want them to add it to their Google Calendar, under here, under Calendar Details, this is where I can get the iCal or HTML information from my calendar, from the shared calendar, so that they can import a calendar without having an invitation. So right here, if I go to add a friend's calendar, I can add it by a URL, and that's how I got the URL. So if I go back to the Francis Band settings, this was the main page we looked at. That's how I can get the address from it. And under share, make it public or not, we're not sharing the address. So essentially it's private, even though we could make it public if we wanted. All I have to do is add someone's email address and it's shared. You can choose, for example, here's Mike, our drummer. You can choose what Mike gets to see and what he gets to do. If I don't want to invite him anymore, I can just trash that. So pretty simple way to share a calendar. That's probably the most exciting thing about the calendar. If I have several calendars, I can display only this calendar and you're only going to see that one. If you notice, you don't see, oops, fill backyard holes. You can see how easy it is to add an event. If I wanted to add something for right now on my calendar, all I have to do is click on this and I could type in watch tour de California, which I'm actually going to do in a moment. I can choose which calendar it's going to be, and it's just that easy. If I want to add, add or edit events, I can change when it starts, when it ends. If I want to add people so that they're invited, that's how I do that. Now, if it was something that many people are planning, I can actually have them modify that, which is pretty cool. And I love the reminders. These also show up on your mobile device. So it pops up on my iPhone 10 minutes beforehand. I usually like 30 minutes these days and then you can choose the privacy. By default, my events are private. Last thing I would like to show you is a couple other people's calendars. 
coffee queue is a great thing here on the west coast I like to know when they are so instead of going to queue.com slash coffee queue I can just see it right here from within my Google Calendar see there's nothing going on today again I can look at it as the month and there's nothing in the calendar for this month for coffee queue be sure and check us out at edtechmoment.com for this and other tutorials. EdTechMoment was brought to you by audible.com. Visit audibletrial.com slash edtechmoment to not only support EdTechMoment, but also get a free 30-day trial to 100,000 audiobooks. You can visit us on Twitter. We are at edtechmoment. You can email us feedback at edtechmoment or email me. I am Bill at edtechmoment. Thanks for taking just a moment.